Kia ora, my name is Carla and welcome to episode 7 or 8 of Sonic Create and Repeat. <laughs> Kia ora. Uh, welcome back. Um, welcome to anybody new, and hopefully this setup looks okay. <laughs> Far out. Um, it's the middle of the school holidays here, so just got a little bit of time to record. Um, as I said before, my name is Carla. I'm coming to you from. Uh, Aotearoa, New Zealand, um, and we live in a little settlement just on the east coast of the North Island. I've got a few things to show you today. Um, hopefully I can keep an eye on the time. I probably should have thought about that before I did this because my camera does tend to shut off, but I might just do it in little segments and we'll see how we go. If you would like to follow me on Instagram, um, it's my Instagram handle for my knitting and sewing is sew.knit.create.and.repeat. So it's basically just the name of the podcast with full stops in between all the things. But I'll put it on the screen. <laughs> um, yeah, so like I said, it's the second week of the school holidays. Um, there's been a lot going on. Um... Yeah, so I've got a few things to show you. There's some knitting, there's some sewing, and there's quite a few bits and pieces um, of works in progress. So I'll start off with what I'm wearing. So this is, hopefully you can see it, I'll, I might take a photo and insert a picture. So this is um, the Hinterland dress by So Liberated. Um, I used a, <coughs> excuse me, I did a, a hack where you, you don't put, I changed it so you don't put a button placard in the front, and I decided that I wanted different sleeves, so I made a um, bishop type sleeve hack, so um, basically, no. So that's the original sleeve, and I found a tutorial on how you can trace trace the sleeve cap and then make cuts and things and, and change it to how you want. So normally, um, you know, it would come up to there, and it's quite a fitting sleeve. So I just wanted a little bit more room. The fabric I purchased from Itokri, which is an Indian supply uh, place, and it's just beautiful um, hand block printed, 100% cotton. It's just a gorgeous, gorgeous pattern. And with these sleeves, I can actually fit a, a merino top underneath, which is really good as well. So that's it. So I've done... Um, a little bit of sewing, but anyway, I'll get back to that later. So my next finished object is the T sweater pullover. By Hohi Lukatelli. So finally finished it oh, a few weeks ago now. What are we now? One, two, maybe three weeks. Three weeks ago. Um, I made it with this cone yarn. It's a lamb. I think it's, it's lamb's wool. I think it might be, I think it might be Romney, but... I'm not entirely sure. 
and I held, um, because this is a DK pattern, I held two strands together. So I think I calculated that, so the full cone weighed 1.26 kilos, which would also, you know, I don't know how heavy the actual cardboard cone is on the inside. Um, and there's 406 when I weighed this and these two balls, um, there was 406 grams left. So, um, yeah, so there's still quite a bit of that, and then there's another whole cone. <laughs> so, yeah, I actually kind of, I bought this with the intention of knitting something for my partner, but when I, um, when I saw this pattern come up, I just knew I had to have it for myself, so... I've worn it a few times. Yeah. And I got these little, it's supposed to be leather, but I don't know if it's real leather. The little, um, if you can see that. You know, little sew on tags from AliExpress a little while back. So I've got that as well. So that's the tea. I don't know, there's not really a lot to say that I haven't already mentioned in the previous podcast. Really, really quick knit um, because you're knitting side by side and there's lots of little sort of um, milestones that you make that you reach which kind of keep it interesting. So yeah, I absolutely love this. Smells nice. Um, oh, I can't get comfortable, it's because I'm sitting on the floor. The second uh, garment, like sewing garment that I made, this is the estuary skirt by Sew Liberated as well. Um, it, this is a, I think it's just linen. Not sure, it could be linen cotton blend. I can't remember. I bought it from Fab Fabrics up in Auckland. And I the only thing I did different is that you've got a choice you can do patch po pockets or inseam pockets. And I decided that I was going to do um, both. Because who doesn't love a few different pockets? So you've got your inseam pocket there and that. And these little buttons. Let's see if I can show you. So the buttons are vintage buttons that I I was given a whole lot of cards with different cool buttons on them years ago um, by someone. So yeah, so that's that one. And then the next finished object, this is 100% linen. This is the Lily Dress by Tasuti Fabrics in Australia. Um, it's a very, very simple dress. It has these pleat details on the bottom side by the side seams. Um, oh, once again, I'll probably take a photo of it and I'll insert that properly so you can see what it looks like. And I also managed to purchase more of these labels, which I've had before, but I absolutely love sewing them into my clothes. I don't know if you can see that, but if you can't, it says you can't buy this. So, yeah. So, I, I made this dress and this one in the school holidays, and um, the skirt was probably maybe a week or so after I last filmed. And that is all my finished objects. So we'll go on to my whips. Um, the first one at hand, so in no particular order, is my Wishes cardigan. And this has been going on for so long, but um, I am getting there. And it has grown quite a lot.
um, if I have a look, so where the stitch marker is here, um, I have to, uh, this section, next section is got to be 17 centimetres, I think, and then I can start the rib, and then that will be the body done, and then after that I can do the sleeve. So it's not too far, it's just small needles, small, small yarn, knitting, purling, knitting, purling, and not a lot happening. So it's good when I just need a mindless knit, but this is just a quick update on this. Um, I've talked about it a bit before. When I finish it, I'll go into a bit more detail about it again, just as a, um, a finish off. So there's that one. And then, this is another just little update. This one's taken a while as well. This is the Ponderosa by Wool and Pine. And, oh, look at me. I'm in the middle of a row, and I thought I was being really good. I not being in the middle of a row. I can't really do this one at night because of the colour of it. The black one, the black cardigan, I can, um, just because it's knitting and purling. I'm just going by feel most of the time anyway. But because this is cabling, I need to be able to see. And But yeah, and I have since, I think the last time I talked about this, I was using a cable needle because I just didn't really feel confident enough to try and... Um, pinch the stitches with my fingers and do it without a needle but it was just so cumbersome some so I gave it a go and I've been doing it actually moved I've probably done probably done say from there up since the last time so I've done quite a bit it's moving it's moving slowly but it's um one of those <laughs> <laughs> so there's that one and what else have I got so this one here I have been working on heaps it wasn't even on my radar the last time I podcasted but I had seen so everybody let's talk about the ranunculus I've been watching podcasts for probably about a year now. No, maybe not quite a year, sorry. And all these people were making these ranunculus tops. And I was thinking, yeah, that's nice. It's a nice pullover, but man, it's no different to me like any other patterned yoke thing. Like I couldn't see the, um, the draw to it, if that makes sense. And then I accidentally came across a Ravelry um, project of a lady called Roko or Roko, I think she's Japanese, um, who had done the most divine version. And so then when I looked at the um, ranunculus entry in Ravelry, I realised that while a lot of the people that I've seen have knitted it as a, just a, either a fitting with no positive ease type top, um, her version or original versions were quite boxy and loose, which I really, really like that. And then this lady, and I'll find a picture and I'll insert it. What she's done is done like a short sleeve version and then picked bound off and then picked up two stitches per bound off stitch at the bottom and made like a fluted or ruffled sleeve at the bottom and oh god it just looks so beautiful so I've made mine with 40 centimeters or 45 centimeters positive ease and the yarn that I'm using is just a merino four ply um, that I bought off Trade Me, which is like, um, what's another version of Trade Me? Is it Trade Me is a New Zealand online marketplace, um, and this lady does her own hand dyeing. So I bought three skeins, knowing, and decided to do a fade. So the top is this grey with sort of grey blues 
and then I'm going down into this lighter blue sort of almost like a washed denim and then the bottom will be this darker one now you may notice this darker one is in a small ball because I had an absolute yarn disaster at first I thought it was me and it partially is me but it was the way this lady has um, skeined up the yarn that when you put it on swift it was okay until it got to where you can see this size this size here pretty much and then the strand was tangled within and I couldn't untangle it so I took it off thinking I could hand wind it or something I just wasn't really in the right mood it was I hadn't even had a shower yet I was still in my dressing gown and I ended up with this big nest of yarn and I got so angry <laughs> after trying to untangle it for about 20 minutes. I was sweating and I was just pissed off basically. I grabbed my nail scissors and I just went chop 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 right through it. So now I've got millions of little balls. But it'll be enough because if I do have to use it it'll just be at the bottom and be fine. But that's what happens when you try and wind up wool when you're not really in the mood for it but you're trying to do something nice for yourself just to make yourself feel better so yeah so I absolutely I can see why people rave about it I mean all these stitches at the top they're so much fun look I flew through that yoke piece so much fun I really, I think, dare I say it, I might make another one one day. And I might have the yarn for it, but we'll say we'll talk about that a little bit later. So that is my relanculus. <laughs> yeah, I'm laughing at myself. So my next work in progress is dedicated to Kelly from Roro and Kate's. She is one of my favourite podcasts. I get so excited when she comes up. So I've never knitted a sock before. And I've actually purchased, I've got a whole book, I've got 52 weeks of socks in a book. I've purchased Brogan from the Woolly Witchcraft um, podcast. I've purchased her DK Biscuit Tin Socks pattern. I've got the Crazy Sock Ladies Vanilla Sock pattern, because that was the one I was going to try and learn to knit a sock on. And a little while back, I bought Callie's Stormseeker sock pattern. When I tried to cast on for the, what do you call it, the vanilla sock, I looked at the ribbing at the top, and I was like, there's no effing way that that's going to go around my fat ankles. Um, I have oedema on my ankles, I've had struggled with it on and off or pretty much most of the time on since I was pregnant with my daughter and she's going to be 25 this year so even when I'm super slim I still have quite swollen ankles don't get me wrong though but they're not that bad like you don't walk around people walk around and go oh my god look at that woman's ankles but you know when it's something on your own body you notice it so I think I was watching one of Kelly's podcast and she might have been talking about socks and I'd asked her I said look you know do you have any tips like for someone with fat ankles <laughs> and she was really good she got uh, actually linked a pattern sent me the link to a pattern where you where the the ankle uh, you can make the ankle bigger and I, I purchased that pattern but I haven't done it yet but I really wanted something really pretty, so I um, decided to cast on her Stormseeker sock pattern, and I did the largest size, and it's actually quite funny because I've got these Eddie Crazy sock needles, and I thought they were 2.5 millimeters, and then I looked at them like 
not very long ago and realized the 2.25 but it's actually okay because I actually realize now that the um, the sock is actually going to be quite big because I'm probably not as chunky in the ankles as I thought I was <laughs> so having you know 0.25 of a millimeter difference it might be helping <laughs> so anyway this is my very first proper attempt at knitting a sock and oh my god that's a lot of little tiny stitches so it might be done by the end of the year <laughs> that's it <laughs> but they're actually beautiful absolutely beautiful and I'm using just that Regia, just the Regia sock yarn with a 2.25 millimeter eddy crazy sock or crazy needles they're really good to use they are really good to use um, and if you want to see what the sock looks like properly hopefully you can see this if you can't I'll try and do an insert She's a very, very, very talented lady, is our Kelly. And then just because I, you know, can't get enough of that, I bought, actually quite a while ago too, I had bought, now where is it? I bought this pattern, which is also one of Kelly from Roa and Kate's. But because it was summer and hats go quite fast, so I wasn't really in any particular hurry to make it. Um, this pattern uses an Aran weight yarn. I think that's what it says. Yeah, it says um, worsted in here, but on, on Ravelry it said Aran, so I was like, ah, oh. be right. So I had some of this wool left over. This is a Guernsey Aran Templi. It's a New Zealand 100% wool. Um, I've got pretty much one whole ball plus some leftovers. I may not have enough, but if I don't have enough, I'll figure out a way. I've got another grey shade. I could be able to do the eye cord edging and stuff with the grey. So, so far, I've just made the ear flaps and joined it in the round. These should cover my little flappy ears so I quite like that and I cast this on because I have another finished object that I forgot about until just now I decided to make a hat for a very good friend of mine who has a baby who would be should be about four weeks old I think and I originally bought this pattern for my granddaughters when they were born and it's the wick now my mouth's not covered the wickston I can't remember where I found this or where I saw it um, it would have been online somewhere I don't think it was Ravelry and you knit it with a DK so my Nana's sister gave me a heap of just odds and ends of DK, so I've knitted it. <laughs> this is so cute. <laughs> oh, can't wait to see you wear it. Little Mac gonna wear the little bunny hat. Very cute. I'm, I've got my sucker thing for anything with ears, hence the reason why I got that pattern because it has ear flaps and they look like little cat's ears. Hey look, I'm 45, but I'm still a kid at heart. So I literally just raced through all those, and I think, I think that's it. I don't think I'm missing anything. Um, but I do have a couple of really cool acquisitions to show you, and they are second hand. 
So um, in New Zealand, we've got a Facebook group called New Zealand Knitting D Stashes or something like that. And people can list these albums and people can list um, their wool or knitting tools or whatever in different albums. So the albums would be, say, like Fingering Weight, um, DK, blah, blah, blah. And you can just go through and then you can just comment, you know, that you'd like to buy it and do a deal through Messenger. And this lady had um, listed these Addy Clicks. And it's a full set. I'm using some at the moment. Full set of Addy Clicks. See, I've got um, my other intercha interchangeable needles are Knit Pro Symphonies. And I thought it'd be quite nice to be able to have some metal ones as well, um, because de depending on the wool, depends on whether I use wool or not. And then I've just gone out and I've actually just bought um, a couple of extra cables too, so that I have more. So that's quite cool, eh? And I think I paid like $100, including post, maybe? Can't remember. Something like that. It was heaps cheaper than what I would have paid for it brand new. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. So there's that one. And then the second acquisition is also quite exciting, and I got it yesterday. So I went into town, and I was in the Salvation Army store. Now I always have a little bit of a fossick around the area where people, where they have, you know, zips and ribbons and stuff. And I found two bags of this. I don't know how old it is. <laughs> Hopefully you can see that. It says weight, one ounce at standard moisture content. 90% wool, made in New Zealand by the Ross and Glendening Company, a division of UEB Textiles Limited. Um, so I always thought one ounce is about 25 grams, but when I put these on the scale, so with 30 grams, and I've got um, one, two, three, four, five, six, two, four, six, seven. So I've got lots of them. Got 13, 14 balls. And so I don't know what the yardage is, but it, it's fingering, but it's very, very, very fine. Um, and I would really, really love some input for anybody out there if you could give me some ideas for what I can make with it. Obviously, I can't make anything too big because I don't know what the yardage is per 30 grams, um, and I don't want to run out. But I would really like something like mesh or lacy I think that would be quite nice especially with that lovely glitter in it yeah so if you've got any ideas I'd really 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 appreciate it that would be so great um one thing about it that I thought was quite funny is it's got a picture of shell like like shell petroleum I think and it says deal moth, moth proof. So I have a funny feeling. It doesn't smell bad. Maybe it's had something done to it that moths don't want to eat it. So I will be giving it a very, very good wash. So that's all of these. They've been kept really nice and clean. They've, I don't know. Hopefully they don't come out of a deceased estate, but you can never tell. Um, but yeah, if you've got some ideas, I'd really, really love some ideas. Or even just of a mesh or a lace pattern that I could incorporate into making my own um, boxy. Because it would be like an overtop, like I'd wear it over a dress or a, a merino top or something like that. So if you've got any ideas, I would really appreciate it. Yeah. 
and that is pretty much that. So my last thing that I just wanted to talk about before I finish, I don't have a lot of battery power left, is what I've been reading. I keep forgetting to do this at the end, and I think, you know, if you don't want to watch it, that's cool. <laughs> but um, I really wanted to talk about this book. I got onto this because I actually watched the TV series on Netflix by the same name. And it was absolutely hilarious. So if you want something funny, it's called Anxious People and it's on Netflix. And I think it's based in either Norway or, no, Sweden, because it's Stockholm is the, um, is the main thing. And honestly, you just laugh. But even the book is good, like you laugh when you're reading the book. Really, really, really good. So basically the premise of the story is, is that there's a bank robbery that doesn't actually happen. And the bank robber tries to escape and they end up in an open home of an apartment, like a real estate open home. And so it becomes a hostage situation. And then when it's finally resolved and the police, um, the hostages are released and the police go into the apartment, the bank robber's gone. And, and this sort of unwinds the story and how it came to be that situation where the bank robber wasn't there anymore. And so it's it's heartwarming. It's um, it's funny. Like I think the good benefit of watching the movie first, which often I don't like to do, is that one of the main characters, the policeman, his hair is absolutely he's such a dog, <laughs> and his hair. In the movie, like he does, he's not described like that in the book, but in the TV series, if you just look up anxious people, <laughs> his hair just gets me every time. Like I can't stop looking at it. Um, yeah, so that's a little bit of entertainment for you. But other than that, life has been good. Um, we've had very unsettled weather. I mean, it's um, autumn in New Zealand at the moment, but it's we've had a lot of rain. Um, I think that since I last recorded, I can't remember whether we just had flooding the last time I recorded, but then we had another cyclone come through as well, um, and it was massive. So we, yeah, um, we've had a lot of wet, and so we've had holes dug in our backyard to put the posts in for our deck extension for weeks, which are just filling them with mud because the guys couldn't come and do any work. They've just started yesterday, so that's something to look forward to as well. Um, I just want to shout out and say thank you to those of you who have been commenting. I really appreciate it. Um, even though I started this to... Um, I started this podcast to document my makes and then with maybe just the off chance that somebody might watch it and communicate with me. And so it's not essential to me that I have thousands of followers or anything like that. That probably put quite a lot of pressure on me. But it is nice having my handful of followers or subscribers and just having those conversations with you. So thank you. And um, yeah, say hi again if you're new. Say hi, let me know where you're coming from. And if you've got any questions, obviously, um, ask away. Otherwise, everything else that I've mentioned here, I'll try to remember to put in the description box below. Uh, yeah, so have a great week. Today is Wednesday, the 27th of April, 2022. Um, I hope you're all doing well. And I'll catch you later. This is just a quick little video of what our backyard was looking like. So we've, we've got some stuff in place now. But we had all these holes. And this is what the deep looked like. This is the mess that we have to deal with at the moment. This is our main entrance into the house. 
mad.